Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking all about the 2006 Nevada State Quarter, going over the value of the coin, the ones that are going to be worth well more than the other ones. We'll also talk about some of the information and history behind it, what its design refers to, but the key here is going to be the errors as there aren't as many of the varieties known, and then there's also going to be some potential for just really nice business strike coins in the upper tiers of grading. We'll cover everything that you'd want to know. Let's get right into the presentation. And here we've got the 2006 Nevada Statehood Quarter. I always get comments saying that I should be saying Nevada and not Nevada, so I'm going to try to do my best here. But we see the stallions, the sun, and some snow-capped mountaintops. I think the silver state is really interesting for coin collectors because there is the Carson City Mint, and a lot of the silver that was used at that mint and in the west was coming out of the Comstock Lode in Nevada. But the coin itself, later in the statehood series, 1864 must have been the date that it was admitted to the Union because they went in order. The first were the first few states to ratify the Constitution, and then they honored all 50 states all the way up until Alaska and Hawaii at the end. Then they moved on to the territories and D.C., um, but... That's what we've got here. There's a few major ones with varieties. There's not going to be on any of the varieties here. You want to look for the Wisconsin uh, extra and extra high and low leafs, and then the double die reverses, especially on the Wyoming, D.C., and Minnesota quarters. But uh, for ones that just have really nice uh, conditions, Mid-State 67 plus uh, is going to be the highest end for that's been discovered so far. Those are about $1,500 coins, but it's really challenging to find any of them this nice because in the mint sets, um, and then this one, Mint Say 68, was a little more common to come by $200, but in the mint sets, they were doing the satin finishes, and those were really well prepared. So these ones are just going to be coming out of circulation, and often they're dinged up to the point where it's not going to make it worth submitting them. Almost all of them are you know, have enough abrasions or um, problems to where it wouldn't be worth certifying. And even here, you're going to have need to have such a perfect coin to make it worth the grading fees that I would just say if you have a mint set, probably keep it intact and there will be more value related to that. Um, then we do have the clad proof. Um, again, similar situation. You know, this one's maybe worth a dollar as well, um, where it's nice out of the set but i would say leave it in the sets don't try to crack it out and then there's the silver proof which i think are a little bit more attractive and they're 90 percent silver you can see that on the side of the coin um, because the rims will be exhibiting no copper coloration as most of the clad coins are going to um, there are a few errors though like i said no die varieties here but the errors i uh, was able to find some this is really special it's triple clipped so normally you just get a single clipped planchet those aren't massively valuable um, but this one was $150 in really nice condition and that's because um, previously the sheet of metal had already had the planchets clipped out of it and it didn't advance properly so then this was cut up but it was cut out where a bunch of other planchets had already been um, broken out of the metal strip then there's also this single curve clip planchet this was more in the $55 range um, but that's just like one big clip uh, coming out of the side and then lastly we've got this sintered planchet or copper wash sort of like an improperly annealed coin but I guess it stayed in the annealing process maybe the heating wasn't totally proper and some of the copper that m composes the core of the coin gets brought to the front um, and brought to each of the surfaces um, through the nickel. I think that's because of the heating Im improper, um, you know, degrees or temperature, um, and it's just staying in this, like, where they're annealed for too long. This occurs, and it's a $150 coin. But those are the different mint errors that we've got on display today. Um, that's really the higher value ones to look for or some of the really nice condition ones on the circulating. Um, because the satin finish, though, again, that's why it's a little tougher to find these really, really nice circulating um, ones. And you can even see here there's a little bit of uh, marking. And I think that this was like a mint state 67. But that's what we've got. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. 
I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every US coin, date, mint mark denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll, yeah, have fun seeing you there.